Good morning from North Central Ohio. Uh, my name's Scott and I own a small lawn care company here in the North Central Ohio area. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about trailers. I bought this trailer from a farmer about four years ago. It's a homemade trailer. Um, I let it sit for several years before I even decided to use it for lawn care. Um, and then this last year, I decided I wanted to use it as a lawn care trailer, so I started hauling it around. And one of the things I found out is how heavy these gates really are. Um, I mean, they are so heavy that I would actually have to bring them down to my chest, flip my hands around, step backwards, bring them down to here, and then I would just drop them and let them go. It's pretty hard on the gates, but it's also really hard on the body. Um, and then when I went to pick them up, I'd actually have to go into a full-on squat position, raise up, lift up, and push up to get them to in, into position so that I could lock them down. So I started thinking I need to find a way to make this better. If I'm going to be moving these ramps 10 to 15 times a day, raising them and lowering them 10 to 15 times a day, I need help. So what am I going to do? So I started looking online and I found all these options that you could buy for two, three, four hundred dollars and I just didn't find that acceptable. I mean, that's money I can be putting towards new trimmers, better mowers, you know, in my pocket, um, you know, just whatever. And so I always like to try to find a lower cost, effective alternative. And what I did, I went online and I started looking and I found a lot of guys that were using garage door springs. Some of the guys were using a plastic PVC pipe here on the railing that had one of these extension springs in it and then they'd have a cable. That's fine if you don't have trimmer racks, blower racks, you know, and, you, and you're not putting equipment on these side rails, that's fine. But I didn't want to lose these side rails because my equipment goes there. So I would rather lose a little bit of internal space on the trailer if it's not gonna affect my mower going on and off than to lose the side rails. So I decided to go, I found a guy online who has like a little three minute video, just a demo video of his trailer. But he didn't show how to install it. He didn't show the tools it took to install it. Now, I appreciate him. He's the reason I built it. So, no, you know, I'm very thankful that he had that video out there. But one of the questions I had when I was done watching the video is, how hard was it? How difficult was it? So, you, are, you can see that I've already installed it. But I'm going to go through the step-by-step -step installation process. I'm not going to actually unbolt everything and rebolt everything. But I'm going to take the camera, bring you close up, and show you how I did it. But the other thing he didn't show was the tools it took to do it and how long it took. So quite honestly, I could have bought all this product online and saved probably five, 10, $15. But I decided last night I wanted to do this this morning. So I stopped by a big box store last night. I bought a set of extension springs. They come in a pack of two. And then I bought the eye bolts, the shackles and the quick links to put everything together and this morning I got up thinking this is going to take me an hour or two to do honestly I was done in 15 minutes I took me 15 minutes to build so I'm going to grab the camera now bring you in close and show you all the stuff that I purchased and how much it was I'll even show you the receipt and then I'll walk you through the step by step but before that I'm going to unhook them I'm going to show you how difficult it is to do this gate and then I'll rehook them and show you how easy it is to do the gate, and then I'll show you all the parts. So let's do that first. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is show you how heavy the gates are without the springs. So I'm gonna unhook them, and I'll show you how easy it is. I didn't tighten these down. These, these quick links, you're gonna actually wanna tighten down with a wrench after you get them hooked up. I've just got them setting here so I can show you exactly how easy it is to hook them and unhook them. So, you just there's a little bit of tension on them you just pull them off let them go down like that okay this gate is already ready to fall i still got a hold of the chain or the spring but this gate's ready to fall because it's an old trailer the springs warped so but here we go i'm going to drop it down and this is how i always have to do it because they're heavy and i'm not being dramatic that's how heavy they are. Now I'm going to pick them up and show you how heavy it is and how hard it is to get it back in place. And then I'll hook the springs up, show you how easy it is to then bring it down and bring it back up. No work at all. Okay. So here we go. The springs are going to get in the way because they're just hanging there. I don't want to do the shackles, but here we go. Ugh.
So to do that 10 or 15 times a day, I'm gonna kill my back and I'm gonna be toast at the end of the day. And I don't wanna be toast. I still wanna have a life when I'm done working. So now I'm gonna rehook the springs and show you how easy it is. And then we'll go in and I'll show you all the parts and all the tools I used to do it and how easy it was. And it really legitimately, even drilling the metal, including drilling the metal, it only took me 15 minutes to install this. So, okay, they're hooked. Now they're not tight. And of course, if I'm using this, driving it down the road, I'm gonna take a wrench and tighten these down more. But now watch how easy this is. One hand, I almost have to keep pulling it because it wants to pull back up. Okay, one hand, I'm going down. Okay, and you can see I'm actually having to fight it down a little bit. But when I set it down, that's it. Now watch me pick it back up and how easy it is to pick back up. One hand, I'll use two fingers. I actually have to stop it from flying back up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut here and I'm going to grab the camera off the tripod, bring in and show you the parts, the tools, and you don't have to have an impact driver. I'm just telling you right now, I, I use an impact, but if you don't have one, don't worry about it. A regular wrench will do. You'll just be wrenching for a little while. It'll take you a little longer to install, okay? But I'm going to pause here, bring the camera in close, show you everything. So this is a 3 8 by 4 inch eye bolt. The reason I've got this nut on here is because my trailer, being a home-built trailer, has this piece of wood sticking out, and I didn't want this eye bolt in to where this was going to get snagged on the wood all the time. So I put this bolt to keep the eye bolt from going all the way in. That gives me clearance on the wood. You don't have to do this probably, but I had to. The spring is a 130-pound spring. The guy online recommends 140-pound, but we're talking eight or nine dollars difference in price. And then these are the safety shackles that I used. Okay. Now let's talk tools. Why do I need a screwdriver? The reason I need a screwdriver is so I could drop it in the eye bolt so when I hit it with the with so when I hit it with the impact driver this wouldn't spin out of my hand. So I use this just to keep it from spinning. I use lock nuts. It did not come with lock nuts. I bought those separate. So the screwdriver is for that. The pliers are to tighten down the security shackles after you get them on you got to get them really good and tight and I used two just like the guy online he recommended two so and then I used a quick link this quick link is a 3 8 inch quick link I went with it because it's 2200 pounds you know it's rated for 2200 pounds the eye bolt I can't remember what it's rated for but I think it's rated for 160 pounds which doesn't seem like a lot but it's not doing a lot either I mean, there's not that much on these. And then the safety shackles are rated at 1,000 pounds. So I, two of them is 2,000 pounds. I'm way overkill on this, but it works. So then we'll come down here. Here's my garage door springs that I bought. 130 pounds garage door extension springs, not torsion springs. 3 8 inch quick links. I bought two of those. Quarter inch uh, anchor shackles. I bought four of those. Here's the nylon lock nuts for the eye bolts, 3 8 inch by 16. So I use this to drill a pilot hole for my 3 8 inch eye bolt. And then in a lot of videos, I see guys will just go from this to the next drill bit, 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 until they get the size they need for the 3 8 inch eye bolt. That takes longer. I choose to go with this method. I don't know what this thing's called. I forget. I've had these. I've had two of these for years. I used to use them when I was installing garage doors, and they're great. You just keep drilling in and drilling in and drilling in, and you pull out, pull this out, see if your see if your bolt will fit. If it doesn't fit, drill a little bit more. It goes fast. The other thing I used my Dewalt cordless drill and my Makita impact driver. You do not have to have one of these. What you will need is a 9 16 if you can see that 9 16 deep well socket and a socket wrench if you can see it i spent 43 dollars and 96 cents here's all the part numbers let me zoom in a little bit so there's all the part numbers that i of the items i purchased and there's my total cost, 
So that's basically all the tools. That's everything it took. It legitimately took me longer to film this video than it did to install these springs. So that's all I got, guys. Appreciate it.